Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Ford Tri Motor begins 2021 national tour in April. Also, SpaceX Crew 2 astronauts join the station crew. And Mars Ingenuity helicopter completes third flight. Happy Monday, everybody. We hope you had a great weekend. After the COVID pandemic halted operations in 2020, Liberty Aviation Museum's 1928 Ford Trimotor 5 ATB will return for a full EAA national tour this year. The first portion of 2021 tour schedule includes a stop in Illinois before the aircraft heads south to Kentucky and Tennessee. The tour will continue into the summer, with the Trimotor returning to Oshkosh for the full week of EAA Air Venture Oshkosh on July 26 until August 1st. EAA's Ford Tri-Motor 4 ATE is currently undergoing continued restoration and maintenance and will not be touring the season. Passengers on board the Liberty Tri-Motor will step back to the golden age of aviation and experience this authentic aircraft from the air. As part of health and safety protocols, no ground tours inside the airplane will be offered at this time and the aircraft interior will be disinfected following each passenger flight. In addition, masks will be required for all passengers during their flights. The Ford Trimotor is known as a luxury airliner and redefined air travel, marking the beginning of commercial flight. After acquiring the aircraft in 2014, the Liberty Aviation Museum entered into an agreement with EAA to showcase the historic aircraft around the country. After the break, AEA urges action to set aside FCC's legato order. More news after these messages. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at aviationsafetyresources.com. At Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. So let's go ahead and start with AEA urges action to set aside FCC's legato order. On the one-year anniversary of the Federal Communications Commission's legato order, the Aircraft Electronics Association joined a broad coalition of nearly 100 organizations urging President Joe Biden's administration and Congress to work with the FCC to ultimately set aside the flawed legato order that, if left in place, would append decades of sound spectrum policy, negatively impact a significant cross-section of commercial, federal, and academic users who rely on many different L-band satellite services and threaten the safety of most Americans. Next, F-15EX delivered ahead of schedule. On Tuesday, a second F-15EX fighter aircraft was delivered to the U.S. Air Force earlier than the contract requirement. The result of a collaboration across the industry, the U.S. Air Force and the Air National Guard. The F-15EX is a ready-now replacement for the F-15C that includes best-in-class payload, range and speed, and an all-new digital infrastructure. 
the second F-15EX arrived at Eglin Air Force Base to begin testing with the first EX that was delivered last month. Sun and Fun 2021 proves itself with major Piper sale. Sun and Fun definitely hit the ground running this year after a year's hiatus due to the global pandemic. To demonstrate, Piper has reported that a M600 SLS was sold on Friday during the expo. The Piper dealer partner for the southeast region of the United States, Lightline Group, sold the aircraft to a Florida-based customer. Ron Gunnerson, vice president of sales, marketing, and customer support, said, We have been delighted with the robust interest in our products during the Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo and congratulate our dealer partner, Flightline Group, on the sale. Online recurrent testing for drone pilots available from FAA. As many in the drone community know, things have been changing in terms of regulations and procedures put forth by the FAA, and keeping up with required knowledge is a significant requirement. Drone pilots who already have Part 107 Remote Pilot Certification can now take their required recency of knowledge training courses online. The training ensures that they have updated knowledge necessary to operate in accordance with the Operations Over People rule, which became effective on April 21st of this year. The training is also free. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. SpaceX Crew 2 astronauts join station crew. NASA astronauts Shane Kimbrough and Megan MacArthur, along with Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Akihiko Hoshide and European Space Agency astronaut Thomas Pesquet aboard the SpaceX Crew Dragon have arrived at the International Space Station. Crew 2 joins Expedition 65 crew of crew of Shannon Walker, Michael Hopkins, Victor Glover, and Mark Van Hai of NASA, as well as the Siochi Naguchi of Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and Roskomos cosmonaut Oleg Novinsky, and Piot Dubrov. SpaceX Crew Dragon Endeavor docked to the complex around 5.08 in the morning, while the spacecraft were aligned 264 miles above the Indian Ocean. Following the Crew Dragon's link up to the Harmony module, the astronauts aboard the Endeavor and the space station conducted standard leak checks and pressurization between the spacecraft in preparation for hatch opening. The crew members first opened the hatch between the space station and the pressurized adapter at around 7.05 in the morning on Saturday, then opened the hatch to Crew Dragon. For a short time, the number of crew on the space station has increased to 11 people, at least until Crew 1 astronauts Walker, Hopkins, Glover, and Aguchi return to Earth in just a few days. After these messages, Mars Ingenuity Helicopter completes third flight. Those details after these messages. Whether you're charting a steady course or pushing for the ceiling, Hartzell Propeller has been elevating flight for over 100 years. It's in our passion for engineering and research. It's in our dedication to testing the limits of performance and creating propellers that are as safe as they are sexy. Now, together with our dedicated family of companies, we're propelling the future of aviation. We are Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical, with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. Welcome back. NASA's Ingenuity Mars helicopter continues to set records, flying faster and farther on Sunday, April 25th. The helicopter took off at around 
431, rising 16 feet, the same altitude as its second flight. Then it zipped downrange 164 feet, just over half the length of a football field, reaching a top speed of 6.6 .6 feet per second. After data came back from Mars starting at 1016, Ingenuity's team at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California was ecstatic to see the helicopter soaring out of view. They're already digging through a trove of information gathering during this third flight that will inform not only additional Ingenuity flights, but possible Mars rotorcraft in the future. Today's flight was what we planned for, and yet it was nothing short of amazing, said Dave Lavery, the project's program executive for Ingenuity Mars helicopter at NASA headquarters in Washington. The Mastcam Z imager aboard NASA's Perseverance Mars rover, which is parked at Van Zyl Overlook and serving as a communications base station captured the video of Ingenuity. In the days ahead, segments of the video will be sent back to Earth, showing most of the helicopter's 80-second journey across its flight zone. Well, that does it for our show today. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with story ideas or just to say hi. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next time.